Well, in this video, I'd like to address an argument yet again made by Miss Sexy Socialist in my um, d dealings with her, which would now be several months ago. Uh, this is a little bit more relevant than uh, than having dealt with her would suggest because this is something that you hear from uh, lots of liberals and even, ironically, from conservatives and especially ne neoconservatives, and that is the... Um, the appeal to the so-called democratic peace theory. The idea being that democracies um, don't fight each other, hence are desirable because if everyone's a democracy then there won't be any war, and also there's kind of an idea that this must imply some inherently cooperative um, pacifistic trait of democracy somehow, and that this is a good reason to advocate democracy. Now, um, there is one uh, problem with this that comes right to mind, especially when this uh, argument is raised by a democratic socialist or an um, anarcho-syndicalist, and that is that uh, by their definition of democracy, there aren't any democracies today. Um, so they'll say, look, the United States never fights France, the United States never fights the UK, uh, they never fight Germany, those are all democracies, so that proves democracies uh, don't fight each other. But if you were to have a debate with them in a separate context and and ask them what is the United States is the United States a democracy they'd almost surely say no um, it would they would probably consider it some type of neoliberal corporatocracy uh, um, a fascist state uh, the European states they're neoliberal they're monarchical they're definitely not uh, some kind of perfect now a lot of American socialists tend to look to Europe as some kind of perfect area but European socialists don't do that they tend to think that Europe is rank with capitalism and free markets and that sort of thing uh, so uh, this is not a critique that is applicable to everyone but if you have somebody who does not believe the United States is a democracy does not believe that the European states are democracies then they cannot use the democratic peace theory because by their definition these aren't democracies and they should rename it the neoliberal fascistic peace theory. The idea that if all the states are neoliberal interventionist states like we have then they won't fight each other. Um, in which case they shouldn't advocate democracy, they should av advocate neoliberal in interventionist states or fascist states. Um, now this is not, this critique won't apply to everyone because there are uh, people out there who do consider these uh, societies to be democratic, or at least democratic enough to count as democracies, but it certainly applies to democratic socialists and to uh, anarcho-syndicalists, anarcho-communists, actual communists. Uh, these states uh, are, are mixed, and so at best this would be a mixed economy peace theory. The sex, second problem is that uh, historically democracies have been as bellicose, aggressive, and bloodthirsty as all other states have been, more or less. The quintessential first democracy, Athens, was a, a violently aggressive empire that didn't ever go more than one year without explicitly aggressively attacking some other area, always a smaller, weaker place, uh, and they did so democratically. You had politicians who were silver-tongued enough, persuasive enough, p possessive of enough rhetorical skill to convince majorities of the assembly to do things like invade their neighbors. So you have people like Alcibiades, Themistocles, uh, Theocles, uh, Thucydides, who could go and say, look, everything in Athens would be better if we could invade, say, Euboa, the island of Euboa, which is... Uh, just to the west, or just to the east of Attica and the Peloponnese, and uh, they would go and, you know, fight a war, um, kill their opponents, enslave the local inhabitants, or kill the local inhabitants, and then have Athenian overlords come and divvy out the land between them, become the new the new uh, upper class. And they do this uh, every year or two, sometimes multiple times a year, all throughout the Aegean. And, and the they, they ruled as tyrants. They were absolutely terrible. And it was voted for every time, successfully. And so, you know, what's the point in saying 
uh, they're more peaceful when they're clearly not more peaceful. Uh, they're clearly able to, uh, willing and able to be aggressive and, and warlike. Uh, and if we go through history, democracies have always been this way. So if you want to say that Great Britain was a democracy, uh, it was perfectly happy to have a vast uh, global empire, the United States. If you want to call that a democracy, uh, was perfectly happy establishing a continental empire and then an international empire. The uh, same can be said for the French and the Germans and the Russians. And if you don't want to call these democracies, then there is no basis for having some kind of democratic peace theory because there are no democracies to demonstrate this. I guess you could fall back on the, the Scandinavian states, of which there are really only uh, four. I mean, Finland's not really a Scandinavian. I guess you, if you counted Finland, you'd have Iceland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Okay, that's five states. Uh, I think I know. I don't know about Finland. But Sweden, Norway, and Denmark all have monarchs. Uh, Iceland does not. Iceland, however, is largely a puppet state. Its independence uh, came from the United States, basically giving it to it. And it's been, um, it's, it's kind of a satellite. I mean, <clears throat> Scandinavia is a pretty small corner of the world with its own unique properties, so one wonders how applicable that would be. And even if these states meet the standard of definition of democracy, so... Maybe they could rename it the Scandinavian Democratic Peace Theory. Uh, but, I mean, if, if these states are democracies, then they're clearly very violent. If they're not democracies, then there isn't an empirical example to base this theory upon. Uh, now, in the, in the American context, um, in contemporary uh, political discourse, the uh, Democratic Peace Theory uh, can be traced back to the 1970s, and it was popularized by Francis Fukuyama. I think that's his name. For, it's something Fukuyama. I th I'm not sure if it's Francis. Uh, the neoconservative. You can find antecedents of this, though, going all the way back, clearly, at least to Woodrow Wilson, who wanted to, quote, make the world safe for democracy. Um, you know, prior to the progressive era, the state, the United States federal government within the United States society was minuscule. It was very limited in its scope and its power and what it could tax and what it could spend. And basically the argument was made, we should have a state that is more hegemonic within society, that is more um, aggressive and active, you know, to do good things. You know, we need, we need a powerful state to, to make things better. Um, but th that powerful state was always used to go to war, to, to fight. And we entered World War I, what is fortunately still considered one of the most frivolous bloodbaths in history. And uh, in the name of making the world safe for democracy, even though we were fighting for uh, imperial powers like France and England and the Tsarist powers in Russia against other uh, admittedly uh, totalitarian regimes like in Germany uh, and the Ottoman Sultans. Um, so there wasn't much about peace or even really about democracy, but there was a lot of justification for violence and war. And if we look in the modern context, that's what democratic peace theory is all about. Democratic peace theory is invoked by the United States and by our puppets in Europe, especially the UK, but also countries like Germany in the name of aggressive war in, say, Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, everywhere these states want to invade, democracy is brought up. Even when the states they're invading have nominal democracies. They have elections in Syria. They have elections in Iran. They had elections in Iraq. Now, we can argue about how valid they were, but uh, democratic peace theory is nothing but a justification for war on the part of these hegemonic uh, Western states. And I read about this, actually, in Interjeet Pamir's book, The Foundations of American Century. He's a Marxist, and he was just pointing out that this theory's only purpose is to justify aggressive war. So, rather ironically, it doesn't perpetuate peace. It's not primarily used by socialists or democrats. It's primarily used by neoconservatives and conservatives as an excuse 
for blatantly aggressive and imperialistic war. So I find that very ironic. And uh, I guess that's it. Wow, 10 minutes. It's a record.